One of the most important jobs any computer has is keeping your data safe. But we as users are responsible for making sure the important things that we care about get backed up. And while iPad OS doesn't have as many options as a laptop OS for backing up your data, there are still a few things you can do to back up some of or all of the data on your iPad. Welcome back to the channel. Today what I want to cover is the different backup options you have for your iPad OS device. Everything I talk about will also be broadly applicable to iPhone and iOS. This will get somewhat technical at points, so there's going to be a written version that I will link to in the description. And everything in this video is used at your own risk, so please keep that in mind. With that out of the way, let's get started with iCloud. The easiest option is to just use iCloud Backup. Now iCloud Backup is built into every iPadOS and iOS device, and it backs up your most important data when your device is connected to power, so plugged in, locked, meaning you're not actively using it, and it's connected to a trusted Wi-Fi network. Now that's going to be a Wi-Fi network your device is connected to a few times before, or something like your home Wi-Fi network. Now, I'm a person that charges everything overnight, so that's when most of my iCloud backups happen. The things it backs up are device settings, your home screen layout, camera roll, your messages, and your app data, including the files in the On My iPad section. So it actually ends up being a pretty comprehensive backup solution, especially when combined with things like iCloud Drive and iCloud Keychain, iCloud serves as a pretty comprehensive backup solution. The pros of this approach are mainly that it's built in and as easy to turn on as just flipping a switch in settings. It's a set it and forget it solution, and it doesn't really need any management from the user day to day. Now the cons of this approach are mainly one, that you only get five gigabytes of free iCloud storage. In 2024, the free allotment is somehow still five gigabytes, not five gigabytes per device, five gigabytes total. So there's a pretty high chance you're going to blow through that pretty quickly and need to buy more iCloud storage. Now, I got by on the 200 gigabyte plan for years before upgrading to the 2 terabyte. And I only had to do that because I started making these videos. The other con would be that you only have access to the most recent backup. It's not something like Time Machine on the Mac where you have the option to go back and access, say, a file at several different points in its history you only have access to the most recent backup. So if you deleted a file two weeks ago and you wanted to try to recover it, you won't be able to recover it from your iCloud backup. If you have a Mac or a PC available, you're also able to backup your iPad OS or iOS device, and this is where things get more interesting. I mentioned before how I recently upgraded to the two terabyte plan on iCloud storage. Well, I didn't go quietly here, and I tried my best to avoid it. One way I did that for a while was to take advantage of local backup. Now, like I said, to do this, you're going to need a Mac or a PC, preferably a Mac. You can do this on PC, but you either have to deal with iTunes on Windows or the new Apple Devices app that Apple recently released on Windows. On PC, I had trouble getting any backups to work with the Devices app, but in theory, it should work. But your mileage may vary. And iTunes on Windows, well, that is an absolute travesty that should be avoided at all costs. So I'm going to demo this on the Mac and be talking about the Mac for the rest of this video. But keep in mind, this should theoretically be possible on PC, but your mileage may vary. So let's start by going over the easy path, and that's doing the backup directly to your Mac. So when you plug your iPad into your Mac, you'll be prompted on the iPad to trust this machine. This is an approval that's needed before the Mac can access any of the data on your iPad. Once you put in your password, your pin code, and approve it, the iPad should show up in the Finder on the Mac in the Finder sidebar. When you click on that, you'll be presented with an interface that basically is a copy of the syncing and backup interface that used to be in iTunes on Mac. I'm going to call out a couple options on this screen. Encrypt this backup. So by default, the device backup you make will be unencrypted, but if you choose to provide a password, the Finder will encrypt this backup. An encrypted backup allows for the storing of more sensitive data, like your health data and Wi-Fi passwords. Show this iPad on Wi-Fi combined with automatically sync when this iPad is connected, 
allows you to sync or back up your iPad or iOS device to your Mac as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Your device will automatically show up in the Finder sidebar and you can trigger a backup whether or not the device is plugged in. Scroll down and you should see an option to backup your device. Click that button and you'll be prompted to confirm the backup on your iPad by again entering your passcode and then you're done. The backup may take a while but should proceed unattended. So now let's take this a little further and try performing a local backup to an external drive that's connected to the Mac. This builds off of everything we just did for local backups. To do this, obviously you're going to need some kind of an external drive. It should be formatted in APFS for best results, uh, which you can do through the disk utility in Mac OS. And this is going to require running some commands in the terminal. If you've never used the terminal, Welcome, it's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna do my best to explain each part of each terminal command we use because you should never just run a terminal command or script you find on the internet without understanding what it's doing. They could do some serious damage to your Mac. So after you've done your initial backup in the previous steps, what you wanna do is find out where this backup is located on your Mac. You can find this by going into the Finder and clicking on the Manage Backups button. In the list that shows up, you should see the backup you just did. If you right click it or control click it, you should see an option that says show in Finder in the context menu. When you click that, a new Finder window will open and it should have your device backup highlighted. If you have multiple device backups, you'll see some other folders here too, but again, the one you just did should be highlighted. The folder name will be what looks like some kind of random identifier, a bunch of numbers and letters. I'd copy that down um, on something like a sticky because stickies still exist in Mac OS and it's pretty cool. And keep that because we're gonna need it later. So next what we're gonna do is open another finder window or tab if you prefer. I recommend a window just so it's easier to drag and drop, but you do you. I already have a folder on my external drive for backups. So what I'm gonna do is take the backup I just did that's on my Mac and copy it to the external drive. Now this is going to take some time depending on how big that backup is. Once the copy is completed, we're going to go back to the original backup on your Mac and let's rename it to something else. I'm going to append underscore original to it, but name it anything that's not the original backup name we need to navigate to the location of our backup. So what we can do here, we're going to use the CD or change directory command and terminal to navigate to the location of our backup. So I can type CD here and then what's cool is I can go to my finder window, drag that folder from finder into terminal and you'll see what actually happens is we get the path to that folder filled in. I'm going to use CD again here to move up a folder because that's where we need to be in the location of our backup. The hardest part of this whole thing is going to be creating what is called a symbolic link. Now, what is a symbolic link? A symbolic link is a special kind of file that points to another file or directory somewhere else. In this case, our external drive. Basically, what we're doing is tricking Mac OS into thinking when we do a backup of our iPad, it's saving that backup to the same place we did that initial backup, but in reality, it's going to be writing out to that external drive. So the command you would use would look like this. So let's break down this command a little bit. So to start, we have the LN, and the LN part is the actual command. LN stands for link, and it's a command that is used for creating links between different files or folders. The dash S part is what you would call a flag. And a flag is a way to give different parameters to a command. In this case, the dash S means that we want the link we're going to create to be symbolic instead of a hard link. The link being symbolic means that we're able to create a link between files and folders that may be on a different volume or file system versus being restricted to the same volume. The next part is the destination path. This is the location where our backups will reside on the external drive. In our case, 
The path is the location of the backup we moved to that external drive earlier. And then finally, there's the source path. This is the location of where we want the link to be. The last parameter is the location of the symbolic link we're going to create. In our case, this is the original path of our backup before we moved it over. This is what Finder is going to look at for subsequent backups. The places in this example where it says backup underscore name is where you would use the backup name we copied down on that sticky earlier. Hit enter to execute the command and then the link should now be created. After you've created the link, if you go back to Finder, you should see what looks like a file icon with an arrow next to it, which is the way Finder indicates a link. So that's verifying that that link was created, the external drive. So we'll go ahead and click on Backup Now. You'll probably be prompted to enter your passcode again on the iPad to authorize the backup. We should see the backup begin. This will take a variable amount of time depending on the amount of data you have on your iPad. So once the backup is completed, let's go back to our external drive in the Finder and click on our backup. If you look at the modified date, it should be effectively right now, just verifying that new data has been copied to the external drive and the backup is working as expected. There are some significant pros and cons with this approach. One of the biggest things you get out of this is that you save on your iCloud storage. So like I mentioned before, I was able to live on that 200 gigabyte plan for an extra few months because I was backing up my iPads to an external drive instead of iCloud backup. If you're using the external drive option, you have the potential of additional backup redundancy if you were to take that external drive for example and then back it up you could have multiple copies of your backups and of course there's the privacy benefit if there are files in your backup that for example you do not want in iCloud for whatever reason uh, having those locally is a good way to get around that now on the con side there's really two big ones the first is there's a pretty significant local storage requirement you will likely need a fair amount of storage to back up your iPad unless you just don't have a lot of data, then this might not be a problem. And then secondarily, and this is speaking mostly to the external drive part, this whole thing is a bit hacky, and I don't think it's actually even supported by Apple officially. What I mean by that is, so for the Mac I use is my Mac Mini, and it has 512 gigs of storage. My new iPad is has a terabyte of storage, and the size of my backup is already bigger than 512 gigs. So when I go to use this approach, even trying to use the external drive approach, the Mac just says, oh, I don't have enough space to contain this on my local drive. You can't back up here, go free some space. So that is a pretty significant edge case you could run into if you're going down this path. A third potential backup option is to leverage the ability of the shortcuts app to interact with the content of the Files app. This could enable you to backup data on an app-by-app -app basis, assuming that app exposes its data to the Files app. If you're feeling a bit more ambitious, you could backup all of the locally stored content in the Files app. To do this, you will again need some kind of external storage device. So my need for going down this approach was that I wanted to backup the contents of my GarageBand folder, the songs I'd been working on. So I put together a quick shortcut that does the following. It creates a timestamped folder on my external drive. It grabs the contents of my GarageBand folder, and then it copies the contents of that folder to the external drive. Now, why would I want to do this when by default GarageBand backs up the iCloud drive? Well, syncing conflicts happen sometimes, and I would hate to lose any of my work just because of some issues with iCloud Drive. So that's why I went down this approach of making periodic backups of my GarageBand folder. This is a pretty basic shortcut, like I mentioned up front, and I will make it available on my site if you want to use it, but you'll need to change the folder and drive names yourself. One of the nice things about this approach is you can have multiple copies of your data. This might be useful 
if you're making some big changes to a file and you want to be able to potentially easily go back and access a previous version, this approach would allow you to do that. The downside, of course, to this approach is that there's going to be very limited app support because not every app exposes its files in the Files app because apps don't have to. That's an opt-in behavior. That's why most apps don't expose their files in the Files app. And that's going to be it for this one. Thank you for sticking with me. If you made it to the end, I hope you got something out of this video. Make sure you visit slatepad.org for the written version and more content. And with that, I will catch you in the next one.